This is a website that is vulnerable. It's an example of a super simple, trivial, insecure direct object reference, or IDOR, as the acronym for being able to retrieve sensitive information or data or things that you weren't initially intended to access. It is unintentionally, accidentally giving the user more privileges or the opportunity to receive and see things that they wouldn't otherwise. This is a challenge that was recently included in Try Hack Me. It's something that I put together as, again, very small, very simple iDoor challenge and something that you might find in a web security category like a capture the flag. And it may be even in some ethical hacking, penetration testing engagements, and just a small example of a weakness or a vulnerability that might be present in different web applications. In this video, I want to showcase the challenge to you and go a little bit behind the scenes on how I put this together and created this for Try Hack Me. But before we dive in, got to give some love to today's video sponsor. GuidePoint Security is hosting another incredible Capture the Flag competition, free for everyone and online for anyone on October 27th. This CTF is at just the right time because October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, so it is a perfect opportunity for all of you working in or studying cybersecurity. Do you think you can capture the flag? I challenge you to play and show your penetration testing, security defense skills, insights, and expertise. Whether you're a beginner, an intermediate player, or an expert, sign up for the challenge and tackle new cybersecurity tasks. Personally, I play the GuidePoint Security CTF competitions at every opportunity I have, so grab your chance to join me and jump in today. It's a chance to have fun, learn new skills, show your cybersecurity talents, and advance your career. The first place winner takes the glory and recognition of being in the GuidePoint Security CTF Hall of Fame and also wins a $100 gift card. Ready to play? Sign up today to get registration info, VPN access, and everything you need to jump into the environment on October 27th. I am super excited to see everyone show their security expertise and skills, and I'll see you on the scoreboard. So this challenge is called Corridor. It's kind of a joke, a little bit of a silly pun on the very ending of that word, IDOR, for Insecure Direct Object Reference. And this is the only page that is presented to you if you navigate to the website. You'll notice that I am in a corridor or a small little hallway, and there are a bunch of different doors that seemingly, if I hover my mouse over them, are like a link. I can click on them and it'll take me to a new page. You might be able to see that in the very bottom left of my screen, and even in the tooltip that's displaying over my cursor on each of these, but they all seem to be different hashes. That's a hexadecimal value set. There are about 32 characters here, it looks like, so I'm assuming some MD5 hash, but I can recognize that because they all looks like hexadecimal values. There are numbers 0 through 9, letters A through F, and a hash, if you aren't familiar, is just sort of a digital fingerprint or a checksum of a file or some piece of data or something on your computer, and it's you know, a representation of that data. Now, if I click into any of these doors, I'll go to the one at the very end of the hallway or at the very end of the corridor, takes me to an empty room. There's seemingly nothing here. I can't click around. I can't do anything else. Uh, interestingly enough, every single one of these doors all seem to do the same thing. I'm hitting the uh, alt and left arrow key on my keyboard so that I can move back within my web browser. And to note, the hint on the description of the challenge within TryHackMe is that yes, all of these are URLs or links within your address bar that might take you to seemingly a hash value. So I've got to be a little bit curious. Okay, what are all of these hashes? Let's go to the one for the door at the end of the hallway and let's see if it's possible to crack these hashes. Now, I'll note, okay, we aren't positive that this is an MD5 hash, but if I Google and go to CrackStation, one online free password hash cracker, we'll see if there are any records, because this is just honestly doing a little lookup and some rainbow tables to see, is there a known value or data that actually maps to if we compute a hash? And it looks like this seemingly has a value, with my face in the way, of seven. Interesting. Uh, it, it's into identifying this as an MD5 hash, and we can actually validate if we go to our terminal. I'll go ahead and run, I believe it's a hash identifier. Yeah, and we can paste in this hash here. Notice, okay, seemingly pretty positive possible hashes. This is MD5. So that lets us know, okay, there's at least a good guess and seeing that this found a result, it's got to be an MD5 hash. Now let's go look at some of the others. How about this first door here? 
I'll grab that hash on the top of my URL bar, throw this into CrackStation, fill out the CAPTCHA, and once again, this actually has a result of one. Okay, so uh, I'm, I'm catching on here. Maybe the other one, the next door, might be the hash value for two. And this will probably go all the way around. We could validate this, we could write a script, we could do anything that we might be interested in. You could be firing up Burp Suite. But ultimately, I think I, I get the gimmick. Granted, I made this. So if I go grab this last one, what is this? You can see this is a hash. Uh, I think I grabbed the wrong portion or no, I just need to actually click it. There we go. Okay, so that's eight. Interesting. So ultimately, all of these potential URLs for doors that we might be able to open or rooms that we end up going into, those are hashes. So what's to stop us from trying to determine what is another room we might be able to go into or access, open a door that isn't present here, but might be something that we could go to. That's the idea behind this insecure direct object reference. Now, note, the challenge description within TryHackMe has a little bit of a, gin, uh, a gimmick and a hint here. I do include the notion, can you find your way back to where you came? So, notice that you're facing this way forward, and you have these doors allotted from one to whatever for things you might be able to go access. But if we want to move backwards, what could be the door behind us? Just some silly, stupid, critical thinking, right? Or just some ideas. Again, you could brute force this. You could use something like WFuzz. You could use Fuff. You could use GoBuster. You could spit out a list of all these potential hashes and try to find a secret door way out in the a thousandth place. But ultimately, we could make this pretty, pretty simple. Let's go ahead and try and echo just the simple value zero. And some of you might already catch a wall that we're going to run into if we try this method right here right now, but let's bear with me. I, I wanna drive us into this. Go ahead and pipe this into the MD5 sum command. That will generate a hash, the MD5 hash for the value zero, sort of. Because if I try and go to this, I'll copy this and bring this back over to my URL within the website. This is not found. Um, so I could try to throw this into CrackStation, like is our hash wrong? I'm again driving us down and about to hit the wall. Some folks might have already been tracking. What's the gimmick here? That is not found. Here's the catch. Using this method, it's something you kind of have to be cognizant of. Just slapping it into the echo command on the command line within your terminal. Sure, you could use ha uh, like a, a bash or Python script or find some resource online. No, if you do this with the echo command, you are going to have your new line included at the very, very end of the echo output. Whoops. That will kill your hash. Notice there is a single new line in between these two prompts here. However, after zero, there is an extra new line because this is adding a new line on its own. Let me show you if you use echo tack n with the arguments here. Now there's a little bit less, right? Uh, or not. Maybe that's just adding it properly for me for my terminal. We could just try and use printf so that there is no new line whatsoever. If I were to add the backslash n that might be present there. Okay, so yeah, our prompt is smartly cleaning things up. You might not even notice it, but I say that because we could use backslash n or, or tack n with the hyphen here. Now piping that into MD5 sum, and you have a different hash. Obviously, if you didn't use tack n, you are including the new line. So that's just a super small little gimmick and semantic that might trip you up using that method. Pasting this value, the CFC D20, etc., into CrackStation, the result is zero. So let's say we're going backwards and going not to door one, door two, door three, door four, but door zero behind us. There we go. Cheesy, dumb, simple, small in that idea of an insecure direct object reference where there's some predictable or known method of sort of, okay, masquerading or obfuscating some locations that might be present on the website in a little gamified way. Hey, you're clicking around within a corridor, within a hallway, but you're given the flag to prove and validate, hey, you have completed this. Let me go ahead and slap this in here and now try hack me can celebrate for you. Thank you. I have completed the task that I made. <laughs> With that said, 
This is Corridor. That's just a small trivial thing, but I want to get a little bit behind the scenes and show you how I put this thing together. Again, super small, super tiny. All this is is a Flask web server. It's running with uh, the notion of, okay, here's the index.html, which includes the Corridor image, and going to different hashes presence could take you to their specific room or the hash of zero, the flag the flag hash, right? The sensitive data that we're trying to retrieve. Uh, that's all. Super simple. The, we, this is the method that we use within Python to go ahead and hash these. Uh, we just take a string uh, bytes representation. So we encode the string of the number that we're working through and then get the hex digest out of it with the hash lib library MD5 submodule. And I spit this into some cheesy Docker file because all the challenges that I try to make, I encapsulate them in a Docker file. And then we use Docker Compose or starting the service automatically when we kick up the virtual machine. Just helps me and I don't know, mentally compartmentalize all these. There's our simple write-up, the proof, hey, this is solvable. Just simply that. If you wanted a simple solve script, we just put together something in bash where we use curl, knowing the host and port number retrieved as silly arguments, and then the actual location grepping out the flag for us. The gimmick here, and what I thought would be kind of worthwhile to showcase is honestly the structure of the page itself. I didn't show you the source code. I didn't actually go ahead and control you or view source on the web page. But all of these clickable doors are built as an HTML image map. And this is something that I've seen like even way back in the Python challenge, super duper old, um, noting that, hey, we, we have this image, corridor.png. Sure, the CSS is actually going to be cleaning that up. Uh, whoops. <laughs> uh, empty anything there. But... This gimmick of the image map is how I can draw and allow you to click on something specific and links within the picture. So I have my corridor.png, but the way that I built that is kind of cutesy, maybe worth showing to you. Let's uh, Google for an image map generator. This image-map.net is honestly all that I used. We can go grab this path and let me try and select an image from my PC. I'll go to this location. I'll go into the static images directory and grab this corridor so that honestly, I could just try to add an area by like selecting or dragging or doing whatever I wanted in here. I think if I actually make this, it will let me uh, add it or no. How do I draw? Oh, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Giving me the points to create this rectangle and put it over the door. If I do this for another one, um, here I can see the point present. I need to specify I want this to be a rectangle and then I can drag that or play with it once I've filled out those values here. Presumably. Please add new area. How do we do that? Am I missing the dot? I promise I did this. <laughs> oh, there it is. What the heck? But that is how you can quickly and easily just draw out the pictures or the portions on an image that you want to be able to create. If you're making a small, cheesy, small game, uh, show you the code. We'll give you this spit out a reference with all those pixels and links and everything that you already coordinated. So don't have to do too much hard work trying to determine where on the page pixel wise you need all this. And that is how I put that together. Super small, super easy, super simple. Just the idea of an eye door in a small gamified way. Anyway, that's that. That is the corridor room. Just some simple MD5 hashing using a little bit of critical thinking or if you wanted to brute force your way into outer space, you certainly could. Wanted to bring it to you. And if anything, wanted to use it as some nice vehicle to message out all the awesome stuff that our sponsor is doing. If you haven't seen it, I believe we're going to be rolling for Guide Points Capture the Flag. Guide Point Security always puts out a great CTF. And please, please, please go play, have some fun, learn something new. I'm excited to see you on the scoreboard. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Talking fast. Stand on the video. Bye, all. Love you.